Appreciate that, Carl. And Paul, you nailed it today. Thank you very much for all that you guys do. Do you remember your uh, saying out here about the mask, Lois? Oh, yes. We want to be like Saul. We want to be on the road to demask us. <laughs> Is that not cute as I get out? Acts 9. <laughs> Yeah. That is great. I am looking forward to sharing with you, and I guess I'll take my mask off and get my microphone on. We are continuing in our apologetics, and I am again really grateful to be here with you and to share this truth with you today. I hope that we are uh, able to do this for God's glory. Uh, after that wonderful prayer, I am all enthusiastic. So if you'll be turning to Genesis 1, I think you'll find that very quickly. And before we get there, I just want to show you, with your help, look what we're doing here. Let me get my little pointer out here. That's why I got this new pointer. We have 656 people are being reached. 134 of them clicked on this sermon. Now, I can't tell you that they, they went all the way through it, but I can tell you that they clicked on it and listened to it for a little bit. There's one more. Again, we're putting this, we're putting this on Facebook with your help. Go to Dave Paul. And look here. 1,300 people saw this, and 251 of them clicked on it and hopefully uh, listened to quite a bit of that sermon. Again, with your help, we, we've been getting those out there. So, um, YouTube uploads this pretty slowly, so it's usually on Monday or very early uh, Sunday morning, uh, Monday morning, before it gets out there. So I usually put it out on Monday. Uh, so if, uh, if you'll continue to help me, we'll put this out there and a lot of people are being reached. So the purpose of our study is clearly to understand that the truth is intelligent design and that we're going to understand that, that we have a young earth and a young universe as we go through this. And today specifically, we're going to hear about our organs. That's the exciting sermon. <laughs> we decided to say that we will no longer need, and we're going to talk about the differences between our cultures. So we're going to talk about those things today. And so if you'll turn with me to Genesis 1, I'd like to share with you the truth out of God's Word. You know this already. You've read it a thousand times beginning with verse 20 and through 28. Then God said, Let the waters teem with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth in the open expanse of the heavens. And God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarmed after their kind, and every winged bird after its kind, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and, and fill the waters of the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning a fifth day. When God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the earth after their kind. And it was so. God made the beasts of the earth after their kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps on the ground after their kind. And God saw that it was good. Let God then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the, of the sky and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image and the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds and over the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Well, Paul, if you'll show them, this I remind you was our great, great ancestor, uh, Pam, if you missed that last week. They took a picture just in time as he crawled out of the, out of the ocean for the first time. It decided to grow legs and arms, and, and it would grow through its tail, and it became a big rat. And that rat became a monkey, and a monkey became an ape, and an ape became a man, according to the secular line scientists. So we had that, and then, then this was, so we used to look like a tuna. Then we became like a catfish, 
And then, then we developed in that alligator with the tetrapod thing. And all of a sudden, one day, Grandpa popped out. Man, it is, it is something else that that many tetrapods crawled out of the ocean just in time so that we could all be born here. We're going to talk about that today. There's a lot of lying going on we're going to talk about. So here, look at this. You won't believe this. Evolutionary tree. Humans may have evolved from plant genes. You used to be a stock of broccoli. How about that? Go down just a little bit, Paul. Humans may have evolved the genes of plant and fungi and, micro and microorganisms that according to consensus, consensus challenging Cambridge University. The study of the little roots showing that we used to be plants. I'm telling you, this is the craziest thing. If this, if, if they had come up with this in the 60s, I would have gotten it, Carl. They'd have had a lot of LSD or something to explain why they came up with these wild, crazy things. Okay, go to the next one, Paul. I, I told you last week that our bodies have 5.6 liters of blood in them. It is estimated that there are 60,000 miles of blood vessels in, in, court, court, in, in and veins and so forth, and that compared to wrapping around the earth, Tim, two and a half times what's in your body, your veins, your capillaries, your arteries, would wrap around the earth two and a half times, and yet we evolved from a stinking fish or a stalk of broccoli. These people are nuts. <laughs> Somehow, by some happenstance, our ancestors crawled up out of the modern goo and decided to grow legs and arms at just the right time in order to become a monkey. And then the monkey became an ape, and the ape became Java man and Peking man and, and New Mexico man, if you're, if you're into that one. And Lucy, well, I'm going to talk about Lucy in just a minute, but I'm going to let Paul bring, bring us up to this one right here. Did, did you know, have, have you ever had a friend that could wiggle their ears? Yeah, there's a muscle back here that most of us, but the vast majority of us, can't use anymore. That's left over from when we used to be monkeys and we needed to make our ears perk up when, when we heard of something down below. So that's left over. We no longer have hair growing on our bodies. I won't even touch that. I'll let you go. And canine teeth. We no longer need canine teeth. Well, they haven't seen Sue in on, at, at Spring Creek on, on Rip Night. <laughs> we don't need K-19. That's what they said. We don't need K-19. Those are leftovers from when we used to be monkeys. Hey. Oh, yeah, we have these molars back here. They're leftovers, too, because we used to chew plants and so forth with our back teeth. Those are leftovers. We don't need them anymore. As a matter of fact, you can pull them, those suckers out. And, a, and, your, and your appendix. You know, back again in, in the 30s and 40s and so forth, they were saying that was just leftover junk. It's no good anymore. But then they have found out, guess what? When you have surgery or something major go on, guess where all the white blood cells are stored? In the appendix. And so when we have that kind of surgery and so forth, and, and, and our body needs extra white blood cells, our appendix pours that out. As a matter of fact, you're also using the appendix. You know what a sphincter muscle is? That's that, you know, when the kid hangs upside down on the monkey bars, that keeps all of his lunch from spilling out. There's a sphincter muscle up here that keeps that in. But they use it as a sphincter muscle. Matter of fact, down here, they're saying, <clears throat> let's be delicate here, that muscle that helps things come out of our body, we don't even need that. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> Where do they get this stuff? Oh yeah, and, and you know that little, that little thing up in the corner of your eye where your, where your tear duct is? That used to be a third eyelid. Now my dog, if you see my dog over here, Carol, it, it had a little, it had a little cherry pop. You don't know what a cherry eye is? A little third eyelid is let that chick that slip out from behind. We used to have a third eyelid. It's left over from that. And speaking of sphincter muscle, Asians have an extra muscle that pulls their eyes this way. And most of them keep that all their lives. Some people don't. Uh, but again, in Africa, they have the most beautiful almond eyes in, in African women. Again, there's a muscle that pulls that back. 
it shows up in certain people, certain people that know. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Go to the next one. It's just kind of a repeat of these. It's a little bit of color. Goosebumps. There's a reason why we used to have goosebumps. We don't need that anymore. There's your twist teeth we don't need. Your canines we don't need anymore. And for goodness sake, let's get rid of this opinions. Go to the next one. They just said these are leftover things. There's that eye that you did, a little thing right there you don't need anymore. Go ahead. Where do they come up with all this stuff? Oh, yeah. And here's your leftover, your, your pelvis and your, and your femur. That's your leftover from a whale. Some people think we, have, we evolved from a whale. But we looked last week and the whales did their own thing. And they became something else. Yeah, there's your leg bone connected to your hip bone right there. That you came from a whale. Go to the next one, please. Okay, let's talk about Lucy. These are, we talked about these leftover organs and so forth, and now I want to talk to you about, about, about Lucy. Lucy was the missing link. Do y'all remember that at all? Lucy was, oh, she was a life magazine and, and all these various things, and, and they, they found these fossilized uh, footprints near where Lucy was found, and so what they, they came up with this whole incredible picture of these three, uh, eight people, missing links, walking along, whatever this was, that ended up being fossilized. And I was going to show you that picture today, but it was a little um, anatomically too correct to, to show you. So we're coming up with another one, but this is Lucy's bow. That's all over there. No hands, no leg bones. This is a no, no part of her face was missing. Go to the next one, Paul. Now here's a picture of Lucy. That's what she looked like. Somebody took that picture. Right there. And so that's what Lucy looked like. So we're grateful to have that. We'll go to the next one. Here's part of the problem. When they started looking into who Lucy was, go, go up just a little bit, Paul, so they could read that. Lucy, they found a whole bunch of other skeletons just like Lucy. Oh, they were so ecstatic. They had found all the missing link all together, except that they had a lot more bones. And guess what? It was just an eight. It was just an eight. All of this hoopla and all this stuff on Life Magazine and all of this stuff that they spoke about. And did they announce that they, had, that they were wrong? Not on your life they didn't announce it. Not to this day they haven't announced admitted it. But Lucy was just another stinking egg. And they made all of this discovery, and you saw the picture and the stuff that they came up with, all from part of the bones. Go to the next one, Paul. It, here's, here's something that, that has been developed, of course, in the last few years. DNA testing, and it's called mito, mitochondria. Not hypochondriac, but Mitochondria is a DNA that they, they're able to test and know. Do you know back when George Bush Sr., uh, Carl, was president, they came up with a genome, the testing project. So Ed and I have been down to uh, A&M where his wonderful uh, presidential building is, and they've got all this whole big room donated, uh, designated to DNA testing, and he did that. He was a, it's a great project. But guess what they came up with? Wait a minute, and go up, Paul, where we can read that a little bit more. The secular blind scientist said, oh, guess what? We came from a single family. Are you kidding me? I thought we came from a stalk of broccoli. I thought we evolved from a stinking tetrapod. Now they're saying that, oh, yeah, we, 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 there was a single family because they, it, it, it proves that. And it even talks about where some of us have come from. And I'm going to tell you about that right now. Do you know that there are two branches of humanoids that scientists have made fun of for years and years, calling them imbeciles? Personally, I think they probably evolved into politicians and scientists. But, <laughs> but these guys, they made fun of them, saying that they were the cavemen, they're the imbeciles, the Neanderthals. You've heard that a lot. But here, Deniz Denizobans. Denizobans are the second branch of humanoids that secular scientists think were the, were the cavemen and they just make fun of them. But it's not true, and I'm, I'm going to tell you about that in just a moment. As a matter of fact, uh, this wonderful looking human being here is, is a, a picture that they have developed, calling him a Neanderthal. I'll go up a little bit there, Paul. They have, they have many, many discoveries of Neanderthal where he is specifically, ritually, Burying their dead with objects with them of spiritual and cultural significance. As a matter of fact, the DNA that they have found in the Neanderthal man 
shows DNA of modern man. So these articles that we're looking at, specifically this one right here, tells us that we have more commonality and more DNA connection with Neanderthal men, who scientists say were extinct and modern men killed them out. We have more DNA connection with them than a brown bear does with a polar bear. Now, if I can just be real specific here, polar bears and brown bears can mate and get, and get along together. So that tells me that their DNA, their DNA connects. That is true of our DNA as well. There's a D. Go to the next one, Paul. That tells us more about the, the, the Neanderthal. Well, that's my man. Go, go back to one. I'm sorry. I think that is. No, I'm right. I'm sorry. I that my fault, Paul. Go ahead where you were. You were right. I'm wrong. You know, if you were, if your family is from Europe, you probably have a goodly amount of Neanderthal in you. And if you have Native American blood in you, you probably are more Indian than Elizabeth Warren is. <laughs> but there was, there was a man who, one of the scientists, who wanted to prove that Native Americans uh, were Polynesian. So he got a boat and he went over to, to the Polynesian Islands and said, okay, if I can do it, they can do it. But then they go up with this mitochondria, mitochondria DNA testing, and guess what? There is no Polynesian. You know what kind there is? Mongolian. Mongolian. None of this at all. So there, let me talk about that more in just a moment. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But here what we're, what we're seeing here is that the, the denizen of man, the denizen of man, uh, we, see, we see that person uh, in both Siberia and we see that person in the New Guinea Islands. So there's a there's a lot to be said with what is what what the DA of what is going on in modern man. Look here at this DNA right here. We, it talks about coming out of Africa. Where, where did the Bible say that, that man was created? In Mesopotamia. Not Africa, but that's where the scientists want to tell us that. Again, everything that they want to do is absolutely against God. I'm going to talk about that in a thing. Why don't you go to the next one for me, Paul? Here's the dentist of the man. I had gotten myself uh, ahead of myself. And Paul, thank you for staying with me on that. So the, the, that's how to spell it. The DNA shows to be human. So go ahead and go ahead, Paul. I've gotten ahead of myself. Here are two twins. Look at these. These are twins. They they were born and grew up in uh, in uh, in Britain. Now, I'll just mention that the Denizen Man was found not only in Siberia but all the way down into uh, New Guinea in that area. Now, these two girls right here uh, were had the same same mother. They were born the same day from the same mother as twins. And you can plainly see that, that one of them here is, is red hair, and, and she is she's very light skin, and her skin is going to burn, and her, she's going to be likely to get more skin cancer. But there's something that's called melanin. Melanin. And melanin is that thing that gets in your skin. And some of you out there can tan real easily. Not me. I work. I've got some, I've got some Irish in me, and I've got some uh, some other things in me, and I have light, fair skin. And when I get out in the sun, it takes me all summer to get the tan that I have right now. But some of you can get out in the sun and, and, and tan all together. That's a gift from God. So those people that are born in Central America versus the people that are born in, in, in Nova Scotia, uh, which one needs the melanin in their lives? Down in Central America. That's why God gave us so that we can keep passing that on to as an adaptation that our, that our bodies have done. So here, that, that particular one is able to, uh, uh, the, the one who is black, go back one for me, Paul. Uh, that, that twin sister is dark. She's considered black, if you will. Uh, and so she, in the other, there's other children in this family, and they have different shades of color skin as well. So again, that's something that God has given us. And this is an example here of these twins. Now, Paul, thank you for going back for me. So the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, is that we are 0.012% different 
from one another. That's pretty doggone close. So how do you think Neanderthal man and the Denizens and the Mongolians and the, and the, and the so forth got to be like they are? Well, guess what? Each of Mrs. Noah's sons had a slightly anomaly that shows up in the rest of our DNA genome. And when Noah's cousins married each other, when Noah's cousins married each other, and, and probably there were some brothers and sisters that married each other, and they got isolated. And likely some genes got isolated so that the Australian or Aborigines are although somewhat like the, the native, uh, natives of Africa. They're not exactly, they're not even that close looking to the natives of Africa. But there is some similarity. And the Native Americans of a, that are found here in America may have some similarity, but really they don't have any Polynesian in them whatsoever, as we talked about a moment ago. But according to all of our DNA and according to the functioning of our bodies, we are all cousins of one another. Kissing cousins of one another, having been born from a single parent. Again, the light scientists will even admit that, but they won't explain it because it opposes their evolution. Let me ask you this. What do African Americans have when they get cut or scarred? What, what is that thing that happens on them? What's that called? Keloid. A keloid. My daughter Keisha went through having a port put in her during her cancer treatment. Guess what she has right here? A keloid scar. The truth is we descended from Adam and Eve until the generation of Noah when the world was so wicked that God destroyed it. And we'll talk, we're going to talk about that another day. We're, you really actually have some things we're enjoying today because of the flood. We'll talk about that. So stay tuned. So then from Noah and Mrs. Noah, there are three sons, married women from the general population, and God replenished the earth. Now during that time, the dispersion of people from the Tower of Babel, and there are different languages, they dispersed into tribes. And they began to isolate themselves, and they began to fight over territories, and to separate from one another. But guess what? Some of them intermarried. And, and so forth. And depending on where our ancestors are from, we are likely have Mongolian in us, or, and most of us around here have what? Native American in us, most of us around here. And many of us uh, are, uh, have from, uh, we have European blood as well. So I'm going to show you soon uh, that, that how, how, we, how we all disperse. We'll talk about that another day. But as I want to conclude with you this morning, I need you to know that God knew we were going to be in battles. And we're going to have certain organs damaged with, with, with knives and swords and arrows. They're going to be damaged beyond repair. With, with, an, with an appendix and with a gallbladder, we are much better off in our bodies. And we are much more healthy to function with. And we're much better off with, with our, our tonsils and adenoids. But you know what? We can live without tonsils and adenoids. We can live without a, a gallbladder. We can live without appendix if they get damaged in battle. God gave us that ability, even though we were we could be much more. So, the tailbone, for instance. I talked to my chiropractor. You know, the, the secular scientists say that tailbone is is just a leftover from when we used to swing around in the in the trees. That's what they're saying. That's not going to get it. But you know what it really is? My chiropractor admitted, told me this. It's our balance. You know you've got nerves that, that hit that tailbone and then they branch off down your legs. You've got muscles and tendons that, 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 that hang onto that tailbone. Now, if you fall on that tailbone, Dale, it hurts. But you know what? That tailbone, it sits there and it helps you balance. It's also a little bit of a warning, like when you've been there long enough, too, isn't it, Carl? Yeah. So I'm going to wrap up pretty quick here. But, but see, the secular scientists want to say the tailbone's a leftover when we were monkeys and apes. No, we're God's creature, designed in love by God, so that we, we will fulfill His glory. That we're going to be filled with his Holy Spirit and we'll be filled with his joy. And we're going to live 
in his kingdom one day. And in that day, we'll have new bodies and a new mind and new in our hope will be, will be fulfilled in him. Well, I'm, I'm trying to share with you the truth today as succinctly as I can. And Paul, thank you for staying with me on this. But I want you guys to know the truth so that we can, so that, what, because more and more um, um, evil is going to be spoken. I'm telling you, in the next year, you're going to hear things. We just want to pull our hair out. Six, less than 60 days now of this election. But whatever happens, this next year is going to be full of stuff. I'm just telling you. Let's know the truth so the truth can set us free. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being so patient with me and allowing me to share this truth with you to know that our bodies are God's design so that he can fill us with himself. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's bow together. Father, we love you. We just love you. And we thank you that you put up with us and care for us and just give us the hope that we need to do the things that we need to do. And may the glory just be absolutely yours. And Father, thank you that you guide us and take care of us. Fill us with your holy self.